Welcome back to Spectre AI. This is Spectre P. In this video, we break down one of the most famous attacks against quantum key distribution, the photon number splitting attack. Before we begin, please like and subscribe to the channel. It's free and quick for you, but helps the channel a lot. Now, back to our content. BB84 assumes that Alice sends exactly one photon in every pulse, but real QKD systems don't work that way. In practice, the source often emits two or more photons at a time, and that small detail opens the door to a powerful eavesdropping strategy. Here, Eve doesn't disturb the quantum channel or raise the QBER. Instead, she quietly splits off one photon from multi-photon pulses, stores it in a quantum memory, and waits until Alice and Bob reveal their bases. When they do, Eve measures her stored photon perfectly, learning part of the key with absolute certainty. In this video, we'll show how the attack works, why QBER stays normal, and how modern systems defend against it. In BB84, security relies on the assumption that Alice sends exactly one photon in every pulse. With a true single photon source, Eve cannot split the state or make a copy of it. The no cloning theorem guarantees that an unknown quantum state cannot be duplicated, so any attempt by Eve to measure the photon would collapse the state and introduce errors that Bob would detect. In the ideal model, one photon corresponds to one avalanche in Bob's detector, and any interference is immediately visible in the QBER. In practice, real QKD systems don't use perfect single photon sources. Instead, they rely on weak, coherent laser pulses whose photon number follows a Poisson distribution. This means some pulses contain no photons, some contain one, and a small but significant fraction contain two or more photons. Those multi-photon pulses open the door to the photon number splitting attack. If Alice emits two photons in the same state, Eve can siphon off one of them without disturbing the quantum channel. Bob still receives at least one photon, sees no added loss, and records a normal detection event. This subtle imperfection breaks the core assumption of BB84 security and allows Eve to learn part of the key with absolute certainty. In a real QKD system, whenever Alice emits a pulse containing two or more photons, Eve can take advantage of that without disturbing the channel. She places a beam splitter in the line and taps off exactly one photon from the multi-photon pulse. The remaining photons continue on to Bob, so he receives a perfectly valid signal with no errors, no extra loss, and no indication that anything unusual has happened. Eve doesn't measure her photon yet. She stores it in a quantum memory and waits until Alice and Bob publicly announce their bases. Because she hasn't observed the photon, there is no collapse of the quantum state. The copied photon and the one sent to Bob remain identical. This is why the photon number splitting attack is so powerful. Eve gains a perfect copy of the quantum state whenever a multi-photon pulse is emitted, while Bob sees completely normal behavior and QBER stays unchanged. In BB84, the quantum bit error rate, or QBER, is defined as the number of wrong bits divided by the total number of sifted bits. In a normal channel with no attack, this reduces to the baseline error rate, E0, which in our example is 1%. Under a photon number splitting attack, Eve introduces no new errors. She only attacks the multi-photon pulses, and those pulses would not have contributed to the error rate anyway. The only errors that remain come from the single photon portion of the key which is the fraction 1 minus F multi. When we plug in the numbers, E0 equals 1% and F multi equals 8%. The new QBER becomes 0.01 times 0.92 or 0.92%. So the QBER actually gets slightly smaller under the attack. 
The protocol sees what looks like a cleaner channel, while Eve silently learns part of the key with perfect accuracy. To determine key leakage under PNS, we recognize that in a photon number splitting attack, Eve learns the bit value of every multi-photon pulse with perfect accuracy. She stores one photon from each of those pulses and waits until Alice and Bob announce their bases. Once she knows the correct basis, she measures her stored photon and recovers the exact bit value with zero error. The amount of information Eve gains is proportional to the multi-photon fraction. If 8% of the sifted key originates from multi-photon pulses, then Eve learns that same 8% of the key with complete confidence. Bob, however, detects nothing unusual. He still receives a valid photon for each of those pulses, so the channel looks perfectly normal from his perspective. Because PNS introduces no errors, the QBER does not reveal Eve's presence. BB84's security analysis assumes that Eve's knowledge is tied to the observed error rate, so Bob significantly underestimates how much information Eve actually has. As a result, privacy amplification compresses the key too little, and the final key still contains all of the bits Eve learned perfectly. In weak coherent BB84 systems, the number of photons in each pulse follows a Poisson distribution. The mean photon number is typically between 0.1 and 0.5, depending on how the system is calibrated. Most pulses contain zero or one photon, but a small fraction contain two or more. Using the formula for the photon pulse probability, we can calculate the multi-photon probability as one minus the probability of zero photons and one photon. When the mean photon number is 0.5, about 9% of the pulses contain two or more photons. Even when the mean photon number is lower, there's still a non-zero multi-photon tail. This 5 to 10% leakage region is exactly what Eve exploits in the photon number splitting attack. Every multi-photon pulse gives her a perfect copy of the bit, while Bob continues to see completely normal behavior. Weak, coherent laser sources have been known from the very beginning to produce multi-photon pulses, and this vulnerability was identified in early BB84 implementations. As QKD systems became more practical, researchers began demonstrating PNS-style attacks in controlled laboratory settings. These experiments showed that Eve could split off photons from multi-photon pulses without introducing detectable errors. A full photon number splitting attack requires quantum memory, but even partial PNS can be performed without one. Limited versions of the attack still leak information and reduce the security margin of weak, coherent BB84. This vulnerability directly motivated the development of decoy state quantum key distribution in the early 2000s. Decoy states were introduced specifically to detect or prevent multi-photon leakage. Today, every modern commercial QKD system relies on decoy state analysis to remain secure. Without decoys, weak, coherent BB84 is fundamentally vulnerable to PNS. In the decoy state method, Alice randomly varies the intensity of the pulses she sends, choosing between a vacuum state, a weak decoy state, and a stronger signal state. Crucially, Eve cannot tell which pulses are signal and which are decoys, so she must treat all of them in exactly the same way. Bob then measures the detection rates associated with each intensity level. Under normal operation, these yields follow predictable patterns based on the Poisson statistics of the source. A photon number splitting attack distorts these statistics, because multi-photon pulses behave differently from single-photon pulses. Any deviation between the expected and observed decoy yields immediately reveals Eve's presence. With decoy states, photon number splitting becomes detectable and therefore ineffective. This is why all modern QKD systems rely on decoy state analysis to maintain security. Let's summarize what we learned in this video. 
Weak, coherent BB84 systems produce multi-photon pulses according to a Poisson distribution, and a small but non-zero fraction of these pulses contain two or more photons. These multi-photon pulses are exactly what Eve exploits in the photon number splitting attack. She can split off one photon from every multi-photon pulse without introducing errors, store it, and measure it in the correct basis after the announcement. This gives Eve perfect knowledge of an F multi-fraction of the sifted key. If 8% of the pulses are multi-photon pulses, then Eve learns 8% of the key with complete accuracy. Bob detects nothing unusual. The QBER remains deceptively normal, and the channel can even appear cleaner than before. Because PNS introduces no errors, privacy amplification underestimates how much information Eve has. The discovery of this vulnerability led directly to the development of decoy state QKD. By varying the pulse intensities, decoy states allow Alice and Bob to detect or prevent PNS. Today, all modern QKD systems rely on this method to remain secure. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to take your understanding further, visit specterai.ai for 55 real-life quantum security labs where you can learn by doing. You can also check out our books on Amazon for deeper coverage of quantum cryptography, attacks, and defenses. Leave a comment and tell us what you want to learn next. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.